Welcome to Medical Dialogues. I'm your host, David DeRose. I'm a physician, internal medicine, and preventive medicine specialist, and we're talking today about COVID-19. Why do some people live and other people die? My special guest is Dr. Greg Steinke. Greg, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me uh, today. We're excited to be with you. Greg, you have a very similar background as me as far as your training, at least in some respects. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I am board certified in family medicine and preventive medicine. I also am focused in lifestyle medicine, but for the last uh, several years, I've been working as a hospitalist um, full time. So you're taking care of some of the sickest people who end up being hospitalized. You're in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Have you been dealing actually with COVID-19 patients in the hospital? I was placed right onto the uh, COVID unit when the uh, epidemic started occurring in anticipation of having a large caseload. And I've got a chance to see several uh, COVID-19 cases now. So here's the big question. This is what we want to tackle in this short video. And that is, why do some people get the disease? They have ba basically no symptoms or actually no symptoms at all. Others get severe infection, others die. Do we have any insights into why it can be such a devastating viral infection in some people and seem like uh, basically nothing in other people? Well, Dr. Rodros, I think that uh, it's a complicated answer. Um, it's definitely not something that, that you want to uh, answer flippantly or uh, lightly. There are a number of factors that are playing a role. I think that we could um, go through several of them. Obviously, the factors related to the virus itself uh, play a huge role. So how um, much virus uh, do you get into your body when you're exposed is a, is a very important factor. Um, and, uh, and then the other very important factor is what your, uh, the characteristics of your body are at the time of your exposure. And that's what I really wanna focus on today. Okay, so clearly a, a health professional with no protective equipment or inadequate uh, PPE, as we call it, um, could be exposed to very sick people with huge amounts of, of viruses. We've heard some of these stories from abroad and, and presumably maybe even here in some settings in the United States. So that would be a, a high risk exposure or a family member who's, who's ill and, and coughing or sneezing. But let's focus on those uh, more modifiable risk factors. Not that you can't control those other things, but let's talk about these host factors, the individual yeah. factors. What's on that list, uh, Dr. Steinke? Well, we've done a number of, uh, uh, of looks at the medical literature, um, also noted uh, the patients coming in. Uh, what it's turning out is the number one uh, most potent factor, not necessarily the most common always, very common, certainly, but the number one most potent factor seems to be obesity. And the most common factor is actually high blood pressure. Hmm. So most potent obesity, most common high blood pressure. I mean, what kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, in one study that I reviewed looking at ARDS, the likelihood of getting ARDS, which is a acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is the kind of final pathway um, in a pneumonia um, when you're very sick, typically you're on a ventilator. Patients with a BMI, which is a measure of how uh, obese you are, um, if their BMI was greater than 35, which is a high uh, level of obesity, their risk of getting ARDS was sevenfold higher and being on a ventilator was sevenfold higher than um, those who had a normal BMI, normal weight. Wow, wow. We wanna talk about more uh, risk factors and things that you can do on this short series of medical dialogues. But uh, Greg, we wanna give folks a take home message right now. I mean, it's kind of depressing already if you're, you're overweight, you have high blood pressure, and now you're hearing that you're at much higher risk for severe COVID-19 infection. What's the good news uh, as far as closing out this short video? I think one of the most important things that you can do is uh, you can be able to uh, do something with your own health to improve uh, your weight, to improve the way you're living. Um, 
there's several things that you can do to uh, mitigate your risk so that um, you don't end up in that situation because you never know when you might be exposed. It is a powerful message and uh, we don't want to leave you hanging. In our next segment on Medical Dialogues, Dr. Greg Steinke and I will speak about some practical things you can do if you're trying to trim down a few pounds, if you're trying to get that blood pressure under control. We'll speak more about just how important high blood pressure is and some powerful strategies to help you. Please join us back next time. Hopefully you're getting some messages that can help you be successful in these challenging times. I'm Dr. David DeRose.